1990, I decided before I get too old and too short, that I moved to Los Angeles to become a star. And instead I became a waitress. Very good waitress. Couldn't remember a thing, but I was very cheerful. And I also worked at an organic farm and fruit stand called the Organic Fruit and Farm Store. Easy to remember. There were lots of stars hanging around there, farmer's market in Los Angeles. I even sold an apple once to Cameron Diaz, a woman I could often be mistaken for if it wasn't for my height, weight, face, hair, and eyes. <clears throat> Anyways, I didn't really like Los Angeles at first, and I remember sitting at a taco take stand talking to my friend Penny. Penny, I don't see myself living in Los Angeles much longer. The drive-by shootings, the earthquakes, the mudslides. I'll have two bean burritos, three chicken enchiladas, four beef tacos, guacamole, refried beans, rice on the side, oh yeah, and a Diet Coke. Anyways, Penny, I don't see myself living in Los Angeles much longer. Did I mention the mudslides, the earthquakes, and the violence? How much will that be? A dollar ninety-nine. I could live here forever. <laughs> I stayed 10 more years. In June of 1998, after putting in a long, hard day's journey at the organic fruit and farm store, I went home and did what any popular girl would do on a Saturday night, my laundry. <laughs> so I was wearing one of these loose, sleeveless t-shirts, and I was sorting out the laundry, and then my breast slipped out of the armhole. So I grabbed it. I don't know if I told you, but I don't have great breasts. They're described in one word, long. <laughs> I had to get one of those garden hose things to rake it up. <clears throat> Anyways, I put it back in my sleeveless t-shirt, and then I felt this lump about the size of a small grape in the upper right quadrant of my breast. And uh, I thought, well, this is probably a good time to call the doctor. So I called my doctor, Dr. Ron ben Basat, and I told him what I had found. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Marla, what made you call your doctor if you know you have lumpy, long, fibrous breasts? Well, I'll tell you couple of reasons. First of all, I had a mammogram six months before that, and it was negative. I had just been examined by my gynecologist two weeks before, and she said my breasts felt perfectly normal. A little long, but normal. <laughs> and mostly, I was concerned because the lump was higher up than my breast, and I thought, oh, it must be a lymph node problem. I had mono last year. Maybe it's that. So I called the doctor, <clears throat> and I like this doctor because he liked women. He respected me. He let me ask as many questions as I wanted to. He returned my calls promptly, and he always examined my complaints thoroughly. Something to think about next time you pick out a doctor. By the way, you have the right to interview them. So anyways, the doctor told me to come in right away, so I did. And I got changed into one of those little paper things. You know, those things don't give you any privacy at all. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Marla, you're wearing a paper product. Aren't you concerned about the environment? <laughs> At this time in your life, aren't you worried about saving a tree? Then I have to say, no. So, I'm lying there on the table and Dr. Ron examines me and he says, show me where your lump is. So I showed him where the lump was. And I said, uh, so what do you think? Lymph node, huh, doc? And he said, no, not a lymph node. Hmm. You know what? Why don't you go get another mammogram? Call Cedar sinai get an appointment, and call me when you're done. So I called Cedar sinai also known as Hospital to the Stars, and I got an appointment for the very next day. Wow, that was fast. Well, next day I went to Cedar sinai for my mammo. My technician's name was Louise, a wonderful seasoned professional, nice gal too. She asked me where my lump was. I showed her. She said, yeah, I feel it too. Hmm. So she walked me over to the x-ray machine, and she squeezed my poor little saggy breast into that panini maker <laughs> for as many little different angles as she could get. And I got to tell you, after all that pulling, squeezing, and pressing, 
my right breast became two inches longer. <laughs> Can you imagine the sight? Now I have to wear a specially made bra that has two different cup sizes on it. Left one's a B and the right one's a D. Well, when she was finished, she told me to wait in the waiting room to see if the films came out clearly. I'm sure you're all familiar with that. So I went to the waiting room and I saw, oh, there's a New York Times crossword puzzle. Sunday New York Times. Oh, they're the hardest. I think I'll grab that and fill out every little tile in that baby. That'll impress everybody. <laughs> Eight across, an Australian seabird. Marla. Nine down, an algae growing in the Adriatic Sea. Marla. <laughs> this is easy. <laughs> Twelve across, an Italian emperor of the 12th century. Marla. <laughs> I did very well. Anyways, Louise came back and then she said, Marla, your films came out perfectly fine, but two things. I see a clump that's there. I can feel it, but it's not showing up on the memo. So, on her own accord, she arranged for me to have an ultrasound. But she said there was a little problem. There wasn't an opening for three hours. Could I go home and come back? And I said, sure, no problem. So I left the imaging department and I went across the parking lot. And suddenly I heard somebody calling my name. Miss Lakowski, Miss Lakowski, wait, please wait. I turned around, it's Louise. She's breathless, catching up with me. Miss Lakowski, I'm so glad I caught you. Guess what, there's a cancellation. You can come back in right now. We can have your ultrasound done right now. <laughs>